Welcome, folks. Good to have you with us. Uh, we're here to talk about real relationships. And we're in that stage where we want to talk about kingdom finance, kingdom finance principles. And this is our second uh, session on that. And today we'd like to speak about debt. And, and is, is debt okay or is it not okay? And what do we do about debt? It, was, it came from a question that was asked from our previous session. So we've got some kingdom principles today that we'd like to share with you. Hey, love. And the first principle we'd love you to catch hold of is that God is our provider. God is our provider. Not man and not good fortune, but God. And the Bible in Psalm 145 describes God as having open hands. If you read Psalm 145, you'll just see uh, just how much God is ready to provide. And when I think of God in that sense, I think of him with open hands. Because the scripture says, you open your hands and satisfy the de desire of every living thing. So he is our provider and he's a God of open hands. He does not withhold, he blesses. That's his nature. And if you know the nature of God and he's your provider, you can rest assured that he will provide all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. So that's something I want to just cement deeply in our hearts that when we look at finance, we just look at God as our provider, the God of open hands. I just want to say that although we, we go to work and uh, we get a salary, but God has given us that ability to work. So really it is God. You're working as unto the Lord and he provides. The second principle we'd like to leave with you is that Jesus is the Lord of my life. Yeah. Jesus is the Lord of your life. And if he's the Lord, we need to submit our finances to him. Mm. Because they're really under his lordship, unless you've taken them back. So is Jesus the Lord of your finances? We spoke about this in the previous session. Yeah. And how we need to say, Lord, whatever you've given is from you and we must manage it accordingly. So stewardship of what God gives you is what we're talking about. And if we are uh, honor God in that, he will honor us in more so that he will bless us more, that we in turn, that we in turn might be able to bless other people more. But if we're stingy, God's going to take what we have away. Mm, yeah. So I think if, if you're struggling in finance areas, just make sure that you've made him the Lord of your finance. Yeah. It's not yours, it's his. He provides it, you look after it. <laughs> okay. The third nugget is uh, God's, Paul's secret. Paul has a secret in the scripture of how we work with finance. And it's called the secret of godly contentment. Mm. Because God is our provider, he is Jehovah Jireh, and we're content with what he provides now, for us. We've got to be content because worry is an opposite of prayer. And if we're content, God will bless us again, as I said, with more. Let us just show God how content we are with what we have now. And we've experienced that, love. I mean, we've, um, we've been in good spaces. We've struggled sometimes, but he's always provided our needs. And Yeah, he always has. Yeah. And so we're content. We don't want to be flashy. We don't want to uh, become somebody that's focused on wealth, but we do want to be content. I, I do want to be wealthy so I can bless others. <laughs> mm. Amen. So, okay, today let's get to the topic of today. The question was, should a Christian incur debt? That was a very deep question. And I think the whole question should be answered with a? Uh, no. no. Yeah, the short answer is no. Not, not if at all possible, you should not be in debt. Yeah. Why? Because debt is financial bondage. The scripture makes it clear in Proverbs, the uh, borrower is the slave of the lender. So it's, it's all about bondage to slavery if you're in debt. Mm. And God doesn't want his people in slavery. Yeah. Because firstly, not in slavery to sin, that's, that's number one, but also not in slavery to debt. And the, sc the scriptures make it extremely clear we should avoid debt. And, and maybe, love, you could just share these two scriptures, if you, if you would. They're both from, the one's from Romans and the other's from Proverbs. I'll read Romans 13, verse 8. Owe no man anything except to love. And Proverbs 22, 7. The borrower is a servant to the lender. So if you're borrowing from the bank and you, ha you have no way of paying back, 
you are the bank's servant. You're in bondage, yeah. basically. So, let's be real. Um, the fact is that debt is a very real thing in the lives of many believers. Mm. It's, it's, it is. It's true. We can't deny that. The question is, how do we deal with it? Mm. We know God's view on it. Get out of debt. Don't be a slave to debt. Um, so, how are we going to get out of it? Are we being disobedient, folks, when we allow ourselves to get into debt? And I think that's a question I won't answer, but I think it'll be clear from what we say um, what the answer is. Mm. So I'll leave you to search the scriptures for yourselves and you see what you come up with. Go through Proverbs. It's full of mm. wisdom uh, on, on the issues of finance. So somebody asked us, what does it look like? What does debt <laughs> look like? I, you can guess who that is, eh? Yes. Yeah, Marcel is the one that always asks don't talk to me in theory. What does it look like in practice? Okay, so here's a few pointers as to what debt looks like. And please listen carefully. One of the things is debt is payment is passed due for money, services, or goods that you owe to other people. So you owe something to somebody, the deadline is passed, and you still haven't paid. That's debt. That's one aspect. The other one uh, is the, where the total value of unsecured liabilities exceeds the total value of assets. What am I saying there? If you had to cash out that asset today, you would have a negative balance. You owe more than what mm -hmm. the asset is worth. Now, if you think about a house, usually your house is going to be more, worth more than the bond unless you've been dipping into that bond and the bank wasn't quick, careful enough to keep you out of the red. And so if you were to sell that house, you'd still owe the bank money. That is serious debt. Owning a house, owning a house, if you can pay it off, is not debt because it's an asset, you see. Because when you sell it, yeah. you can sell it for more than you bought it. Exactly. Yeah. So that, I wouldn't see that as debt. I'd mm. see that as an asset. And if, as long as you're able to make the monthly payments, you're not in debt. Yeah. If you've overextended and you, you've bought assets to the extent that you can't make your monthly mm. pay, then you're in debt, you know. So whether it's a car, whether it's a house, you, you should not, in front of Almighty God, Commit to more than what you can pay off on a monthly basis. You know, when Jock and I were doing marriage training many, many years ago, I actually suggested to the couples that came to us, if you can, when you get married, live on one salary. You've already lived on one salary for, the, for, the two, for yourself. So if you can, live on one salary. If not, one and a half salary. Then put the other away. And many years later, there was a testimony of a young she wasn't so young anymore. She was saying to me, you know, if I remembered nothing else but that we should put away. So they kept her salary and saved it and saved it until they had children. Then she was uh, um, able to stay at home, be a stay at home mom, mm. because they had all that. And I think they, they never extended themselves be, be, beyond mm. the one salary. You know, that really involves self-control. And that's, sure. that's a sign of somebody that's submitted to the Lordship of Christ they're able to exercise self-control. Yeah. So you may want to ask yourself <clears throat> these questions to really get a sense of where you are in this, this equation. Um, I'll ask you a few questions. You can answer yes or no. You don't have to tell your partner or anything, but here's, here are the questions. There's about five of them. Number one, are you always late in making payments? Mm. Okay, that's number one. If you are, there's a debt problem. Number two, is your credit card always maxed out? You may even have several credit cards and you might be paying off number one using number two and then two using number three, paying off two. And so it goes in a vicious cycle. Mm. So guys, that is, that, is a, that is the snare of the devil. You're in that debt trap. Next question. Is your credit score full of black marks? Answer yes, you're in debt. Number, th number four, are you getting more and more behind each month? You're sliding down that slope mm. into uh, the pit. Do you wake up at nights with cold sweats, wondering how you're going to get out of this hole? Yeah. So if the answer to these is yes, folks, you're already in debt and you're enslaved by your worst enemy, which may be yourself. Yes. Okay. I'm not um, being ungracious here. Honestly, I understand and many people have struggled with this, but hear my heart. God wants you to get out of that hole. He wants you to be free. Yes. Now, what gets us into debt? Let's be honest with each other now. The Bible speaks of three forms of sin in, in 1 John. 
And it talks about the lust of the flesh, which is often about sexual lust, the lust of the eyes, which is what leads you into debt, and the pride of life. Now, pride is the bottom of most sin, right? But the, the lust of the eyes, I must have what I see, mm. or uh, my impulse says, I need that, I deserve that, you see. I've heard and that's, many people say that. That's called the lust of the eyes. Yeah. There's another word for it in Scripture, and it's called covetousness. Mm. Covetousness is desiring what you see others have, and maybe allowing the media to uh, stimulate our wants and our image that says, I must have so-and-so. And we give in to our impulse because I deserve it. Yeah. That's, that's the vicious... I've or, worked hard. Yeah, that's the cycle of Satan that, that brings you into temptation. And it's the lust of the eyes, that mm. sin, that, um, that, that facilitates that. Yeah. Can I give them a testimony? Mm. When Jock and I first got married, um, all our furniture except my bed was secondhand. And then we were uh, at a time in our lives where we could build another house and we moved into this new house, but we still had old furniture. A friend of mine said, oh, down the road, there's this man who's got this beautiful garage. It's all kitted out with Lamborghinis and Mar Maseratis, and it's got carpeted garage. Don't you want to go and see the house? And their furniture's incredible. And I purposed in my heart, no, because I knew myself. I knew I would see what they have and I would want. Mm. But, you know, <clears throat> there was a, a, a joke in that as well. Many years ago, um, when Brian Houston, yes, Brian Houston, he came and visited us. From Hillsong, From you recognize he, Brian Houston. <clears throat> but he wasn't then in Hillsong. And him and his friend sat on my lounge furniture and they had a giggle because it was very old and I had wood underneath it so they didn't fall through. But you know, God has blessed me over and above when I gave that lust to him. Mm. I decided I'm not going there because I would lust. So mm. if you know your character, if you know you're going to want something that you can't have, don't go there. So what you did, you avoided temptation. I, right? I ran. And, and, and where you are now, if, even if you saw something like that, you'd no longer lust for it, would no, you? Yeah, because God has dealt with that, that sin in your life. And thank God for that. We all have those sins we need to deal with. Undisciplined spending, that's one of the other yeah. things where you have no respect for your budget. Lack of self-control. Now, in a, in a marriage, that's almost like betrayal, isn't it? Because mm. here we put a budget together, and then I go spending recklessly and maybe not even telling you. So that's a little bit like treason in a way. Because we have an agreement, we must stick to the budget, but because of my impulsiveness, I go and spend what I should not. And what's beyond that agreement? That, that um, we agreed that we would talk about what we want to spend. Yes, yeah. And I think if you can have that agreement, nobody spends anything of the budget until you've discussed it together and get into agreement. Because we're a team. Remember, this is all about team. Mm. And, and when we're in the same corner of the boxing ring, when we are a we, um, then it's, it's, it's actually betrayal if I go do something secretly and don't tell you. Yeah. So we have to have that transparency where we trust one another. And it's only if you make sure that you're accountable to one another. That's a big secret in beating debt. Okay, so examine your motives uh, when you think about something. And our discussion should be, do I really need this? I'm going to give another testimony to that. Okay. Um, when we were in America, we were getting our cars. And Jock said to me, shall I buy a four by four? And I thought about it. And I said, well, Jock, if you buy a four Every by four. Every man wants a four by four. <laughs> I said, if you buy a four by four, will we be going four by fouring? And he thought about it and he said, no. So I said, well, that's your answer. Yep, that's it. <laughs> God spoke to me through my wife. <laughs> so we were prudent and bought something that was what we really needed. So examine your motives. Is it a must have or is it nice to have? That's, mm. that's I think your, your testimony yeah. shows that. What is that strong impulse that drives me to acquire? You know, sometimes... Covetous, covetousness comes in many forms, but it's, it's sometimes that very strong impulse that you have to submit that to the Lord, otherwise it's going to overtake you. Um, yeah, the other thing is that sometimes we may even be in debt through no fault of our own, and, and there, there are those cases where for some unavoidable reason or the behavior of someone else, and we find ourselves in a, in a debt hole. And again, guys, we, this is not spoken judgmentally of anyone. But what we're wanting to encourage you today is get obedient and get out of debt. Yes. So Paul 
Paul teaches some very, very amazing nug- nuggets in Scripture, but this one is the nugget, I've given it to you before maybe, of godly contentment. If, if you have this in your life, godly contentment, you'll overcome covetousness. Yes. Won't you read from Timothy, love? I'm reading 1 Timothy 6, 7 to 9. But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into the world, and we cannot take anything out of the world. But if we have food and clothing, for these we will be content. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation, into a snare, into many senseless and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. Mm. And you and I have seen that. Mm. We have seen it firsthand. Yes. It, that, is a, that scripture is so true. Mm. Yes. So, folks, I'd like you to just take a moment and look deep into your soul. And right now, just ask God whether you suffer from covetousness. Lord, do I suffer from this covetousness, the sin of covetousness? Because the Bible calls it a financial snare. That scripture is very clear. So let's think about that, folks. Just be honest with yourself. When we live beyond our means, we're already in that snare, that that trap, because we're deceived by our lust. You know, and I just want to say as well, if you're living beyond your means... And God says to you to give something, you can't. You have to disobey God because you disobeyed him in your finances. Mm, yeah. And you don't want to get into that situation. Can I say it a different way? Is yeah. that God's maybe prompting you to give, then you need to get to a position where you can give. Yes. Okay? Uh, don't give irresponsibly and don't give without being in agreement because that's the power of agreement mm. when we when we talk together about what we do. Yeah. And I always ask Angie, before I give something to somebody, I didn't always do that. There was a few times when I impulsively gave. And what happened? And then we were burnt, yeah. So, but we've we, learned by that. Yes, we need to repent, guys. I needed to repent and yeah. let Jesus to set me free. Scripture has got very good advice. Here's the good advice. Do everything you can to get out of debt. Treat debt as your enemy, And getting out of it has to be your most urgent priority. I'm speaking to your hearts today. Debt is your enemy. Puts you in slavery. Get out of it. Now, we're going to read from Proverbs, which is a beautiful scripture, uh, which gives you the urgency of this battle. Don't just treat it, oh, you know what, one day I'll get out of debt. No, it's a priority, and you have to get into the battle very strongly. Mm -hmm. Let's read from Proverbs, love. Proverbs 6, 1 to 5. Dear friend, if you've gone into hock with your neighbor or locked yourself into a deal with a stranger, if you've impulsively promised the shirt off your back and now find yourself shivering out in the cold, friend, don't waste a minute. Get yourself out of that mess. You're in that man's clutches. Go, put on a long face, act desperate. Don't procrastinate. There's no time to lose. Run like a deer from the hunter. Fly like a bird from a trapper. Can you hear the urgency? Oh, so urgent. And and God says, don't treat this lightly. Deal with it urgently. Run like a deer from the trapper. Um, Go and act desperate. (laughs) Oh, please. (laughs) You're in that person's clutches. Get out of that mess. Mm. Yeah. Thanks, love. That that scripture, I'd, I'd recommend you read it again from Proverbs. Remember, folks, that you and I are stewards. We're managers of what God has supplied into our lives. We, we're stewards of what he's given to us. Lord, look how much you've given to us. We, we've got to be your stewards, look after it, and, and deal wisely with it. Let me ask you, would you be rash or unwise in dealing with something that somebody has entrusted to you? Let's say I've lent you my car. Are you going to be unwise with it? Let's say I've given you... Um, something that is very valuable, and I've said, look after that for me. Would you deal unwisely with that? Because we're stewards of God's provision. And that means be with careful planning, investing wisely, and never wasting. Because how can you waste God's resources? It's, it's, mm. it's unthinkable. That's why there's a budget. Yes. So we don't waste. That's so we absolutely. know what we're spending. Budgets. On. Budgets are important. Yeah. And we have to stick to them. So Proverbs gives us more nuggets to help us from being rash and irresponsible with God's resources entrusted to us. And once again, we're reading from the message and just let's give, one at a time, let's, let's give these nuggets. Proverbs 11 verse 15. 
Whoever makes deals with a stranger is sure to get burnt. If you keep a cool head, you'll avoid rash bargains. That's so important. What a wonderful advice from the word. If you keep a cool head, mm. you'll avo avoid rash bargains. Now, I believe that cool head means, you know, you go to a shop and they'll say, oh, this is going to be gone tomorrow. There's no, more, there, there's no more supplies. You've got to make a decision now. God is not going to work like that in your life. We saw a lot of that impulse buying during the run-up to COVID and oh. people were going crazy, isn't yeah. it? Okay, but keep a cool head, the yeah. scripture says. Proverbs 22, 26 to 27. Don't gamble on the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, hocking your house against a lucky chance. So you see, don't hock your house up against a lucky chance. The time will come when you have to pay up. You'll be left with nothing but the shirt on your back. Mm. This may, God's word is just so amazing to me. Everything in life, if you're in doubt about it, go to the word. And those get rich quick, quick schemes that people want to try and make you fall for. Those are the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow that wants to draw you away and, yes. and, um, yeah, and, and make you do rash things which you normally wouldn't do. Yeah, so that, again, the scripture is full of these. Mm. Just let me close now by suggesting that the way out of debt is simple, but it's tough at the same time. It is very tough. When you're in a hole, mm. it's tough to get out of it. Yeah. But here's a couple of things you have to do. And folks, we want to help you with this. And, and we're also available to talk in depth about your situation. Firstly, you have to acknowledge that you have, have a debt problem. Admitting that you have a debt problem is first and foremost. Unless you're prepared to admit it, you're not going to fight it. Mm. Hey. Yeah. Okay. Then you may also have to admit that you have the sin of covetousness and it's, it's got you. And ask God to forgive you, and then you have to receive his forgiveness, and then take authority over that covetousness to break it over your life. You know, it's like an addiction. Yes. You know, to, it, it's, what do they call it? It's um, therapy, retail therapy. Retail therapy, absolutely. I, I feel good when I go and buy something. Yes. But mean, that's a trap from the enemy. It is. Yeah. Then it's important that we get into agreement. If you and I are in this together, mm. We need to declare war and fight this twin enemy. There's two enemies here. It's covetousness and Amen. debt. And they go together. Amen. So are we in agreement that we're going to do that? That's yes. the question. Be, never, be careful never to play the blame game. You know, it's easy to say, oh, it's my wife. She always makes debt. Or my husband <laughs> is the one. But you know what? If you're going to fight this together, what do you have to do? We have to accept each other's shortcomings and never put blame. I never yes. should be blaming you you should never blame me but we fight this together but this debt recovery plan we know from not from ourselves but from other people it takes three to five years mm. to get out of it mm. and if you're really serious it could take eight months mm. yes so the, the plan to get out of debt requires a lot of discipline yes. and stickability i mean you're going to have to be at this consistently for three to five years mm. until you get out of that debt trap and you have to agree that none of us, neither of us, will um, fall back or waver in the fight. We're going to do this together. And it's, it's a we plan. It's a plan that we do together. Yeah. The other thing I'd recommend is become accountable to a trusted counselor. You know, somebody that is able to help you in getting out of debt. And um, that you can share with them your successes and take their advice seriously. So get a counsellor, somebody that you're accountable to. Folks, that's um, really our, our heart today is to say, take this seriously. Mm. Declare war on debt. And we're here. If you, if you need us, you can email me, jock at thebond.co.za, or call me, and we'll arrange for some counselling if needed. God bless.